This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. I'm your host today, Tate, and today we're going to be talking about all the moves that has been going on right before the NBA draft. I mean, I've been watching the NBA draft a long time, and I can never remember a time when so many moves happen and so many teams were jockeying for position. Um, I'm not sure if it's just kind of like uh, because of the way the salary cap has gone and since it's gone up and there's a lot of there's a lot of money in the salary cap uh, and this is going to be the new norm is it because everyone is speculating what's going to happen with this uh, with the uh, you know free agency with LeBron James becoming a free agent after next season uh, also you know um, Michael Westbrook could be a free agent the whole thing about um, Paul George, uh, you know, there's Jimmy Butler. There's a lot of guys out there, and I think and seemed like a lot of teams were jockeying for position so that they could make that move or that trade. And it kind of kicked off uh, with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, they made a surprising move. Uh, they went ahead and they traded... D'Angelo Russell, which was one of their big young pieces that at one point in time I thought uh, they would not consider moving, but they actually did make that move. They traded D'Angelo Russell uh, for Brooke Lopez and the number, number 27th pick. And I looked at this and, and the biggest thing about this was it's kind of one of those situations where when... Mitch Kupchak and Jim Buss was at the end. They were trying desperately to make a lot of moves to justify their reason for being staying with the Lakers. And unfortunately, they made some contracts that just were not worth having. And one of the people in this trade, which is Timothy Moskov, the Lakers traded Moskov away, that contract more or less away, Packaging it up with D'Angelo Russell to get Brooke Lopez in that number 27 pick. The most important thing was by getting rid of Moskev, it gives the Lakers the ability to not only have Brandon Ingram and the number two pick in this draft, but it gives them the ability to actually go out and sign two max contracts, which makes it a very powerful thing. Uh, with that, with them trading uh, D'Angelo Russell, it definitely tells you, at least it tells me one thing, that tomorrow uh, ball will be with the Lakers. Uh, the Lakers will, will spend their number two pick on on ball, and I think he's a good fit there. He's, he's that guy that, um, despite all the crazy stuff that kind of comes along with the, and the luggage that comes with his dad, but he is a player that has a lot of potential. Uh, he can spread the ball around. He's a perfect fit to work with that core nucleus, which will be Brandon Ingram, uh, Brooke Lopez, and then Ball. And then you know you have you'll have Ball there. And then there's a lot of talk about Paul George, uh, and that's one of the things that have been coming up uh, since this move is. Uh, should the Lakers give up a Brandon Ingram 
or that number two pick to get Paul George. And all day there's been a lot of speculation about that. And some people say, no, under no, no circumstances do you give up Brandon Ingram or under no circumstances do you give up that number two pick. The reason why, you know, I, I would love to see them keep uh, Brandon Ingram and the number two pick and bring in Ball and then try to package up some of their other draft picks to get Paul George. The reason why a lot of people don't think that you should do that is the fact that, you know, first off, Paul George has already said he wants to go to the Lakers. He doesn't care what team uh, he gets traded to. If Indiana tries to trade him, he will not sign a long-term contract with any team except for the Los Angeles Lakers. And that puts the Lakers in a powerful position. My thing is, I you know, a lot of the lot of speculation, a lot of people are saying, you know, if you already know he wants to come here and you can get him next year, why give up the picks now? The reason why you give these picks up now is strictly because the last five, six years, that top that top free agent where the Lakers thought, you know, our cachet of being the Los Angeles Lakers will get us a top player that will want to sign a free agency with us. It hasn't worked. And that's the reason why Jim Bush and Mick Kupchak is no longer with the Lakers. This, this is the reason why I say the smart move is to try package up. And I hate to say this, but, you know, either... I say, you mean, you know, Brandon Ingram for Paul George, I would do. Uh, because then you have Brooke Lopez, Paul George, you'd have Ball coming in, you'd have a nice young player that uh, someone would want to play with. There's a lot of people that would love to play with a superstar or, a, you know, a, he's a bona fide superstar. Paul George is a bona fide superstar. You would have Paul George, and then other players will want to come to the Lakers. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are thinking is the Lakers are trying to clear up a lot of cap space, not only to sign Paul George, but to sign LeBron James. And there's a lot of speculation that LeBron is going to opt out of his contract, which he will. He will opt out of his contract, but that would be to sign another contract. And it's, does he opt out and leave Cleveland to come to the West Coast? And the way I understand it is either he wants to stay in Cleveland or stay uh, or go to the West Coast and go to the Lakers or the Clippers. I would say by looking at LeBron James's history, do you put all your eggs in the basket in the LeBron James sweepstake basket? Because I say no. The Knicks tried to do it. Cleveland did it. Miami did it. There's a bunch of teams. The Lakers were part of that. Uh, where everyone was all gearing up and trying to make room to sign LeBron James. I say the better move is to, to get Paul George there. And then go for Russell Westbrook. And it's not that LeBron James isn't worth the pick. Everyone knows he's the best player in the game. At least in my opinion, he's the best game player in the game. But with LeBron, LeBron plays all his cards close to the vest. And you will never know if, you, if you're the Lakers or you're the Knicks or you're Cleveland or the Clippers history has shown that you won't really know where LeBron is going until that last minute. At that point, are you really going to let a Russell Westbrook or someone else slide away and then be like the Lakers were a few years ago when they were trying to get to get LeBron to come, come to the Los Angeles Lakers? I don't think that's a good move. I would go and go for Paul George and then go for Russell Westbrook. 
I know a lot of you are listening and saying, you know, Russell Westbrook is not going to leave Oklahoma City. Don't count on it. He definitely, I think he's definitely leaving Oklahoma City. And here's the reason why. He just watched Kevin Durant win a championship and that eats at him. He stayed at Oklahoma City and became pretty much the MVP, but on an irrelevant team. He has the option to opt out and he can go to a place where he could be a major star, partner up with another major star in Paul George. You would you would have ball and then, you know, and like I said, Brooke Lopez, uh, you could actually, that's a core team that could actually contend in the West. No one's getting no, you know, right now it's, you know, just the whole point for the Lakers is to contend. No one's going to touch Golden State right now. But if you can make the Lakers relevant, where they're, you know, with the cachet that they have, the rest of the pieces will fall into place. The Lakers have young players. They have salary cap room. That's the move I think they should make. So the question is, should they part with a Brandon, In Brandon Ingram or that number two pick? I would say yes. So that's my take. Now, when we come back, we're going to still talk about some of the more crazy things that have been, uh, not necessarily crazy, but are the interesting things that have happened uh, today uh, as everyone is gearing up for that NBA draft. Stay tuned, and we'll be back. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines, they got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. But the big thing was getting rid of Timothy Moskev's contract, which was something that the Lakers and Magic Johnson had made a priority was to get rid of a lot of those contracts that were going to weigh them down and stop them from make, reaching their goal, which is always a championship. Uh, so now by getting rid of D'Angelo uh, Russell and, and Timothy Moskev, it allows the Lakers to sign two max players which the first player and the first domino in this and that mix is going to be in my speculation it's going to be Paul George the second one I think will either be LeBron James or, or Mike or, or uh, Russell Westbrook so so that's what we first that we, we covered earlier now we're going to move on to the Chicago Bulls, which is going to tie into another uh, part of the basketball situation here, uh, and that ties in with Cleveland. First off, uh, earlier, uh, I believe it was yesterday or this earlier this morning, Dwayne Wade opted into his contract uh, and notified the Bulls that he would be coming back. It's a smart move on Dwayne Wade's uh you know, behalf strictly because of the fact that his market value has has gone down a lot, and the most money he could make was would be to stay 
with the contract that he had, which I think was about twenty, twenty four million dollars. Uh, the market is not going to give him that much money. Uh, if anything, he would have to take a pay cut. By opting in, though, it gives him an opportunity to either stay in Chicago where he's from or later in the season, mid-season, if someone wants to trade for him as that, that final piece uh, to a playoff run, it puts him in a good place without having him give up a, a large chunk of cash or take a big pay cut to actually go and play for a contender because that's what he would have to do in order to play to uh, to sign with a contender you know is he's going to have to take a pay cut but now with him opting in someone would have to trade for him and he would get all his money it's a smart business decision even though maybe Chicago isn't the best place to finish out your career but the big thing that happened uh, with Chicago is the fact that Jimmy Butler has decided that he wants to stay in Chicago. Uh, there was a lot of speculation uh, that either Cleveland, he was that piece that Cleveland really wanted to add to their team that was going to kind of put them over the hump and get them to contend uh, back with uh, Golden State. Uh, there was, you know, there was speculation that he would sign with Boston. Um, I was kind of surprised to find out that there was a an option uh, to trade him to Boston for that number three pick. And Boston decided to stay with that number three pick instead of taking Jimmy Butler. I don't know what Danny Ainge is thinking. There's no, I, in my opinion, there's no one in this draft that... I think on the short term, and, and you were talking about the next three to four years is going to be better than Jimmy Butler. I, I would take Jimmy Butler over anybody in this draft. So the fact that they wouldn't give up the number three pick, there's no, I don't think there's anybody in the draft that they could have, uh, that they can pick up that would be better than Jimmy Butler. So I don't think that was a smart move on the, on Danny Ainge's part, part and the Boston Celtics. But Boston is very steadfast with the fact that they're going to work with their draft picks. Uh, and so uh, it's, you know, they, they pass on Jimmy Butler. But the big thing is, is that Cleveland, who has been, you know, they're, they're desperately looking for another piece that will get them back over the hump where they can actually contend with Golden State. And Jimmy Butler was that one piece that they were really thinking about. And that goes to what I the, the biggest question that I've that I just just keeps coming up is how does Cleveland go into the week of the draft and they let their general manager go? They they decide to let David Griffin go the week that the draft is going to happen. One of the busiest off seasons in NBA history. Uh, the one of the most busiest times where they're trying to get a piece that's going to put them over the hump. They let their general manager go who was supposed to be negotiating all these contracts and pulling off these deals. Also, you're trying to keep LeBron James in Cleveland and he's very fond of David Griffin, but ownership decided he's not the guy they, they want. And just decided they were going to let him go. They're going into the draft without a general manager. They have a group of guys that they that's going to make the, that's going to handle the draft as they prepare to hire a brand new general manager, which is uh, what looks like is leaning every everything looks like it's going to be Chauncey Billups um, from ESPN. It it's, the way I understand it is. The only thing stopping Chauncey Billups from being the new general manager of the Cleveland Cavaliers is Chauncey Billups. That's the only way that doesn't happen. Uh, I don't know if there, that, that was a smart decision. I understand why they didn't may not want to sign David Griffin long term. I can understand why they may not have wanted to give David Griffin a lot of money. And, and, and the reason why that is, is the fact that David Griffin is getting a lot of credit 
for the success of the Cleveland Cavaliers, but is it really his success or is it the fact that they got LeBron, LeBron on his own decided to come back to Cleveland and there's a number of people that wanted to play with LeBron and they were willing to play, pay, uh, you know, take less money to come to Cleveland just for the opportunity to play with LeBron and potentially get a championship. So with that being said, if you're looking at things that way, do you really want to spend a lot of money on a, on a general manager who may be riding the coattails of their star player uh, on the way to a big contract? So I understand why they didn't want to do it, but when you look at the situation, you say, okay, the contract's up. LeBron likes this guy. We're right before the draft and we're trying to pull off a move where we can get another major player to come to Cleveland. It's worth extending that contract just for that. Even if it's a two year or three year contract and you have to eat a little something at the end, if you decided you want to get rid of him, I would not have gotten rid of David Griffin. Not at this point. If they had the opportunity to extend it beyond the draft and then get rid of him, I would be okay with it. But, you know, I, I'm surprised that they made a move like this right before the draft. It really puts them in a bad place. Uh, part of that is, uh, I think why Jimmy Butler decided he did not want to go to Cleveland as well because it looks like Cleveland is in a bit of a, a bit of a mess right now uh, with the uncertainty of LeBron James. There's a lot of, un, you know, a lot of pieces. It's Kevin Love coming back. It's Car Kyrie Irving. Uh, they were talking about Kyrie may, if LeBron leaves, may try to force a trade. And if you're Jimmy Butler, you're like, okay, if I'm gonna sign long-term with Cleveland and there may be no Kevin Love, there may be no Kyrie Irving and there may not be no LeBron James. I'm not going to Cleveland either. Uh, and I'm from Cleveland. As, but, you know, it's one of those things. I understand why he, Jimmy Butler, didn't make that decision. But as you're the Cavs, uh, Cavs ownership group, it's important to do whatever it takes to get Cleveland back into the championship and contend. Keep LeBron happy, get LeBron to sign another two-year agreement, uh, and then bring more, bring on more pieces. So I think if LeBron liked the general manager and David Griffin, I think they should have kept him, and they would be in a better situation with all this moving and shaking going on. To not have your captain on uh, on the ship is a crazy situation. All right, speaking of crazy situations. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the New York Knicks and we're going to talk about uh, Dwight Howard. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Check out the show that's built on the MMA from the UFC to extreme cage fighting. They got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G smcpodcast.com for more info. talking about in the first segment we're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers and their trade of uh, D'Angelo Russell for Brooke Lopez 
Then we talked a little bit about the Chicago Bulls and how Dwayne Wade opted into his contract and how Jimmy Butler has decided to stay. And there was an opportunity for Butler to go to the Celtics, uh, but the Celtics did not want to give up that number three pick. Uh, and how Cleveland has kind of, you know, kind of missed everything by firing their general manager right before the draft and right before all these moves are going down. Uh, it's just, uh, looks as, it's just a poor time to get rid of your general manager. Speaking of poor and general managers, the greatest coach of all time, possibly one of the worst general managers or of all time, Phil Jackson. There was a story came out where the, Phil Jackson and the Knicks would be open to to trading Corzingis. Now, if the Knicks trade Corzingis, that would be absolutely crazy. First, they want to get rid of Carmelo and they're willing to get rid of Corzingis. That would make them the absolute worst team in the NBA because no one is going to give up any major pieces. Uh, you know, you're not going to get, you're not going to get Cleveland to trade you LeBron James or Oklahoma city to trade you Russell Wells Westbrook to get Corzingas or Carmelo Anthony. Uh, the best thing you could do if you did the, a trade like this would get, you know, get a, a decent piece and a bunch of draft picks but that means they've already been starting over for better part of a decade, longer than a decade. This means th this would be a complete stop and restart. And if you're gonna st if you're gonna rebuild your team, you everybody that rebuilds their team, they're looking for one piece. They're looking for a piece that they can build around. And Corzingis is that guy. So there's no way that I don't I mean I don't understand why anyone would even bring that up as a possibility to trade Corzingis because Corzingis is the one piece that you have that you can build around. Uh the Knicks and I and I I'll, and I'll, I'll go as far as to say this. Carmelo is still a very solid scorer. He's one of the best scorers in the league, but it's like New York has went out of their way to undermine Carmelo and really hurt his image uh, with the hopes of trying to force him out because he has that no trade clause. So by trying to force Carmelo out, they've kind of devalued Carmelo to the point where no one wants to trade for him. So the Knicks are almost in the situation where there's talk that because they can't find a trade piece, that they may actually cut Carmelo to just to get rid of him, which is crazy because if you're a team, let's say, I don't know, you let's say you're Sacramento or you're the 76ers or you're Oklahoma City, it doesn't matter what team, if you're if you're not Cleveland or one or Golden State or one of those top tier teams. I think a lot of teams would say, hey, I'd be willing to start a team with Corzingas and Carmelo Anthony as my centerpieces. I think a lot of teams would do that. But in the crazy world of the New York Knicks, no one knows. It's like no one knows what the other hand is doing. I don't know, you know, and I look at it and I say, is Phil Jackson really that bad of a general manager? And I love Phil Jackson as the, the coach. But I'm going to say I'm, I'm giving him a pass. And here's the reason why. If the New York Knicks were like this spectacular franchise and then he came there and it fell apart, I'd blame Phil Jackson. But when you look at everything that has gone down uh, with the Knicks, general manager after general manager, coach after coach, it's always been 
I mean, it's been crazy since the, the 90s. Once Pat Riley left, uh, it kind of started going downhill. Uh, I just don't understand this team. You're in one of the, you're in the biggest market and no one wants to go there. No one wants to be a coach there. It's just a bad situation. Uh, so, and the whole talk of getting rid of Corzingis makes it an even worse situation there. Because if, if you're, if you're a free agent, you're thinking about signing with the Knicks and you hear that they're open to signing your only corner piece. No one wants to go to New York. No one. And if you remember, once upon a time when they're talking about when LeBron wanted to was going to test the free agent market, New York was a very high place for him. It was very high on his list of places to go. Now when you hear the rumors, no one talks about LeBron wants to go to New York. No. Even LeBron knows there's nothing good coming out of New York whatsoever. Not in the basketball world, that is. So, that concludes my my rant when it comes to the, what is the thing called the New York Knicks in basketball. And that's a, it's, I don't even know if she should call it what the Knicks do, does anymore as basketball. Uh, so, that concludes with talking about what the Knicks and Corzingas. When we come back, we're going to take one more break. But when we come back, we're going to close out by talking about another trade that happened today. And that is the Hawks and the Hornet, the Hornets and them going out and trading uh, Dwight Howard. Stay tuned and we'll be back. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. trading Corzingis um, and how crazy that sounds uh, and I truly hope that they're not going to do something that crazy but speaking of trades another trade went down today in which the Atlanta Hawks traded away their hometown hero Dwight Howard uh, and the 31st pick and the this and this year's draft. Now, when you look at that and you say, Dwight Howard, who went back to Atlanta to go back home, and even home doesn't want him any longer. Dwight Howard has been, I think this is his fourth team in five years. And the big thing about it is, I know a lot of people don't like Dwight Howard. I'm not the biggest fan of Dwight Howard. I'm not going to lie to you. But it's not that Dwight Howard is a bad guy. Dwight Howard is actually a really good guy. From everything I hear, uh, he's a really good guy. The big issue with Dwight Howard is the fact that he's a big kid. He's that guy that just never grew up. And that was his biggest problem when he went to the Lakers. Uh, and Kobe had the problem with him. You can't be contending for a playoff and getting your team ready when you have 
a jokester or a, a you know or someone clowning around when it's time to get serious. Dwight is always that guy, uh, you know, and that was one of the big issues that Kobe had with him. And I know Kobe got a lot of slack for that. But when you step back and you look at things as things go on, you realize that he goes to Houston and Houston didn't want him. He goes to Atlanta and Atlanta doesn't want him. And it's it's one of those things where he's a great player, possible Hall of Famer. And I know that sounds crazy to say Dwight Howard's a Hall of Famer. But if you look at his numbers when he had what he did in Orlando before he hurt his back and before all the craziness happened, he's done enough to be a potential Hall of Famer. But the thing about it is, when I look at Dwight Howard, I look at a guy who let his brand and having a good time move, get ahead of what his true goal should have been, which was to be an all-time great and a champion. Uh, he never really, it didn't seem like he ever really wanted to put in the effort to be an all-time great. You know, when he was with the Lakers, and even now, just the, the, the free throw shooting, uh, the clowning around, you can't have a guy, if you're trying to keep your team focused and moving in that, you know, that direction of, we're going to be focused. We're going to we're going to progress. And you got one guy who's supposed to be your leader, and he's constantly clowning around. It undermines the coach. It undermines the organization, and it makes him a person that eventually you don't want around. And this is also a guy that you definitely do not want to one. If he's going to undermine your team, and he's never going to be serious, he undermines the team. So is he worth the money? So you don't want to spend max money on him. You don't want him on your team. And so eventually what happens is you go to Houston. Houston looks around and they say, you know what? I think we're better off without him. And they trade him to a, they trade him away. And guess what? They were better without him. Uh, Houston made a big improvement once he was gone. Atlanta. I thought Atlanta made a big drop once he got there. Uh, Atlanta's, I think, is another team that's better off without him. And that's sad to say because of the fact that he truly is, from everything that I have heard, uh, is a good guy. But I just don't think he's that guy that you want to build your team around. He's a guy, and also he's gotten up in age where if he, if he was... If he was smart, if, I, if there was someone that was going to sit down with Dwight Howard and give Dwight Howard advice, I'd tell him to stop worrying about your brand. Stop trying to be that, you know, a all-time scorer because he's not going to be that guy. No one's going to build their team around him as, this, as a scorer. But make him that defensive stopper. Make him just concentrate on defense and kind of reinvent himself because when he does focus on defense, he's one of the best. He's one of the best defenders in the game. But can you keep him focused enough and keep him serious enough to constantly be a top defender? A lot of times, a player plays to the level that they practice, and if you have a guy who's always goofing around in practice. And it's never serious in practice. You never reach that ultimate goal. And that is to be a champion. LeBron knows that. Kobe knows that. Uh, you know. And, and you know. You look at some of the all time greats. They all know this. Kevin Durant knows this. Dwight Howard never figured it out. With that. I thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Uh, to Golden State Media Concepts basketball podcast thank you for listening to all a good night you've been listening to the golden state media concepts sports podcast
Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.